בשם השם נעשה ונצליח, שיעור תורה, שלום וברכה, חברים יקרים. We're back here from Eretz HaKodesh, from Yerushalayim HaKadoshah, here in Israel, giving you some insights of uh, the Torah, of the situation that's happening right now. Tonight we're going to talk about the protests, what to do about them, what, how does it even make sense, and what's going to be the end. Tonight's show is going to be for the Refua Shlema, for Rabbi Ephraim ben Shulamit, Rabbanit Sarah bat Anat, Rabbanit Levana bat Sarah, Avi Mori David ben Nesriya, Imi Morati Doris bat Jora, and all of Am Yisrael, all the righteous Noahides, and especially a uh, high level of protection in Siyat Dishmaya to uh, all of those uh, hostages that the uh, Hamas, Imach Shimam Bezichram, uh, the uh, took and Rezat Hashem HaKadosh Baruch protect them, and also for the Siyat Dishmaya for... Uh, the big event that Be'ezot Hashem, we're a uh, big Torah event that we're planning on uh, having uh, tomorrow night, Be'ezot Hashem. Uh, so just as an update for everybody, uh, quickly, uh, anyone that uh, has uh, signed up for the event, uh, Be'ezot Hashem, the event, it will take place tomorrow, uh, and it's going to be a very, very big Kiddush Hashem. There's a lot of information that uh, will be uh, news to everybody, including Team Bezot Hashem, some of you that are even inside of the team, you're going to get some great news tomorrow night, Bezot Hashem. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of information, and also we're working very hard. We're going to have it streamed live uh, on the different channels, on the app, on the uh, different news outlets are going to have it. Uh, we're going to have it, Bezot Hashem, on uh, Facebook. And we're going to try to do it in as many places as possible, but uh, again, uh, Tune in everywhere until you get the live feed. It's also going to be on uh, different uh, major uh, websites. They're going to air it live. Uh, so this is going to have, uh, Bezat Hashem, a very big impact on Am Yisrael. We're also going to, uh, Bezat Hashem, have uh, live uh, translations in English, meaning that uh, the, uh, you know, the event is going to be you know, generally in Hebrew, but we uh, hired a couple of different companies, and translators, and so on, that uh, there's going to be English subtitles, uh, you know, on the uh, live transmission, so you're able to, Be'ezot Hashem, understand everything that's being said live and not going to have to wait uh, for uh, the translation to be done at a later date. Uh, also, for those of you that have already gotten tickets and are coming, Be'ezot Hashem, uh, there's going to be uh, some um, uh, headphones that we're supposed to have, Be'ezot Hashem, for, with live translation also there. Uh, so, Bezat Hashem, pray for us that uh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu allows this major tikkun uh, for Klal Yisrael, uh, for Am Yisrael, for specific people uh, that uh, throughout the generations to be completed, Bezat Hashem, and uh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu allow us to be the vehicle to sanctify His name, Bezat Hashem, uh, because there's just simply going to be a lot of... Uh, amazing things happening at this event, hence the reason why we've been so adamant and stubborn about having it, as it's not your uh, ordinary event. I can tell you one thing, that uh, all of the haters and the enemies of Am Yisrael, of, uh, of, of Judaism, and needless to say of our organization and its rabbis, are going to eat their hearts uh, as they see the big Kiddush Hashem, Bezat Hashem. And all of it is not to our credit at all, uh, but rather to Akadosh Baruch Hu himself, as he is the one that's allowing us and has allowed us to do all these things, Baruch Hashem. Uh, so with that being said, you know, this was obviously a little bit of a uh, teaser of good news, but uh, we have a lot of uh, information. If you look at the news right now, there's a lot of bad news. And, you know, the, the war uh, that uh, has been happening uh, over these last few weeks, between good and evil, between the Jewish people against the uh, Ishmaelim, Imach Shimam uh has been a uh, horrific war, uh, but really the biggest part of the war is not even taking place in Israel or in Gaza, but rather in the media and on different college campuses and on different uh, major streets around the world. And uh, not a day goes by uh, without seeing another scary picture of how many people are protesting for the annihilation of the Jewish people. And uh, these are all people that, uh, it, you know, you see the numbers. Uh, these are all civilians. 
uh, but yet they're cheering uh, for uh, complete annihilation of the Jewish people. And Kadosh Baruch Hu turned all of their curses on Am Yisrael and all their words against Am Yisrael as curses upon themselves, just like he promised our forefather Avram Avinu that those that bless you will be blessed and those that curse you will be cursed. Uh, but uh, still, this uh, uh, while we do know for sure that all of those that go against Am Yisrael, uh, you know, and needless to say, go against the Torah, uh, are going to get punished severely, the worst possible punishments that will never end, still this is terrifying to people that are alive today. Uh, as I'm getting uh, messages from around the world, uh, whether it's from Turkey or from uh, different places around the U.S. or different places around Europe, uh, Canada, and uh, many other different places where people are telling me they have protests out, you know, outside of their house, uh, you know, around their job, and uh, and literally the numbers are sca- you know just staggering. They reported that there was over a hundred thousand people, uh, or I should say, a hundred thousand animals. Uh, that uh, you know came to protest uh, in England. Uh, the fact that this is even permitted is another story, uh, which we'll discuss Bezat Hashem. But uh, over a hundred thousand beasts decided to protest, and uh, the reason why we call them that is not because you have no right to protest. Certainly, you have a right to protest. You believe in something, there's no problem. But when your belief system means that you believe in the annihilation of uh, another people that uh, didn't do anything to you, and needless to say, uh, wants to live in peace and has been a peaceful uh, uh, country uh, and people throughout all of history, uh, and only has been uh, uh, attacked time and time again, generation after generation, uh, it's a, uh, it, it seems odd that so many people hate you. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the amount of people that are protesting in London, over 100,000 in the U.S., Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands are protesting in different places. Uh, and of course, uh, it's virtually impossible for these protests not to have violence. They always end up in some level of violence. And one thing I can tell you is that this violence will only continue growing worse. Uh, you know, right now the violence is relatively under control to a certain extent. Uh, obviously, we've seen some uh, some of them attack the police uh, with uh, very minimal retaliation or, or defense by the police. Uh, we've seen them attack civilians with very little uh, defense possible by the uh, by the victims. Uh, you know, being the people that are you know uh, Jewish most likely or, or pro-Jewish and pro-Israel. Uh, also, we saw even the uh, uh, them go to war with a uh, what seems to be the uh, the um, some people, at least some of the members of the uh, Black Hebrew Israelites uh, in uh, Chicago. At least one person seems to be a representative of the Black Hebrew Israelites are fighting against these uh, Hamasniks. I'm surprised it's only one uh, and not uh, their whole tribe, since they say that they are. Uh, They're Israelites, even though their whole ideology is uh, obviously uh, something we've spoken out against. The point being is, if uh, these people hate Israel and hate uh, the Jewish people, that means that they also hate them too. Uh, So uh, it's uh, surprising it's only one small fight. But the point is is that these protests are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, They're getting more and more violent. And uh, there's really no end in sight. And one, th- one of the things I can tell you is that just like Rabbi Yisraeli Salant said uh, nearly a uh, hundred years uh, before the Holocaust took place, when he found out that the Reformed Jews uh, wrote a, uh, a, a new version of the Shulchan Aruch, a new version of the Jewish Book of Laws that desecrated the Torah, that uh, said that the Torah is not from heaven, that in so many words uh, went against the Torah. Uh, and, uh, and, and when it, with such uh, um, zeal and, and, and arrogance against the Torah, uh, Rabbi Yisrael Yisraelim said that when you uh, wrote a uh, book against the Torah, woe to us on a day that Hashem allows the Goim to uh, write a new book of laws that actually reminds us of our laws. And that's exactly what happened nearly a hundred years later when the Nuremberg Laws uh, were published. Uh, and uh, if you look at actually the Nuremberg Laws, the Nuremberg Laws were, uh, some of them were in line with what the Torah said, which is 
forbidding intermarriage between Jews and Gentiles, uh, you know, forbidding, uh, you know, homosexuality and forbidding other things uh, that uh, the Torah says is forbidden also. So in so many words, when the Jewish people forsake the Torah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu uses the goyim uh, that hate them to remind them uh, of the Torah. And in essence, it seems like what's happening right now is that uh, with uh, nearly 80% of the Jewish people in the world not following the Torah, uh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is allowing the goyim to use their laws to remind us that we are Jewish where you have all types of laws in different campuses and, and in cities and states and countries that are allowing these uh, uh, violent protesters to continue protesting, uh, where you cannot say that they're not violent because when they're protesting, you know, that they're pro, let's say, one country, that's one thing, it's fine, no problem. You could be pro-Palestine, you could be pro-Zimbabwe, you could be pro, uh, you know, uh, Pluto, for all I care. But when you say that your pro means the annihilation uh, of another country, needless to say of the Jewish people, when your pro means that you want the uh, gas chambers of the Holocaust to be reopened, when your pro means that uh, you are uh, uh, in favor of what Hamas terrorist animals uh, did just a few weeks ago to innocent civilians, children, uh, men, women, elderly uh, when your pro means that you are pro violence against uh, against civilians, uh, and your pro means that you want the Jews annihilated altogether, uh, where they you know they they cheer from the river to the seas, Palestine will be free. This is in so many words means that they want all of the Jewish people of you know that live in in Israel to simply go into the sea, uh, and uh, needless to say. Uh, this is the same uh, cheer that they say around the world. Uh, they don't want the Jews to go anywhere else. They, it's not like they say, listen, leave Israel and go to uh, America or go to Uganda, like Herzl wanted. Uh, or, uh, or No, no, they just simply want the Jews out of this world. And the, uh, the reality is, is that they are using the law of the land, wherever that land is, to do this. And when they are violent, the police are uh, helpless and really can't do much for them. Uh, in fact, in some cases, the uh, like in Turkey, for example, uh, you know, they're actually their uh, primary cheerleader of the protests against the Jews is the, uh, the 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 head himself, the head aton, the head donkey himself. Uh, of, of Turkey. He's the one that is uh, declaring war against Israel and in and, and, and the West, and in some cases even hinting at a uh, war between uh, the, uh, you know, the Muslims and the rest of the world. So the point is, is that you're seeing that uh, Akadosh Bahu is allowing all of this to happen, and uh, we have to ask ourselves, what good can possibly be here? Because we wrote that uh, you know, there's going to be some good news. So what good could be here? So the Gemara says to us in Masechet Megillah that, as I've said multiple times over the years, everything that's written in the Tanakh, in all 24 books of the Tanakh, are relevant to each and every single generation, to each and every single person, to each and every single household. Needless to say, the, uh, the words of the prophets that HaKadosh Baruch Hu chose to be in the Tanakh, uh, were specifically selected because they were relevant and are relevant to every generation because there were many more prophets throughout the years, over a million two prophets, uh, 1.2 million prophets throughout the generations that the Am Yisrael had, but Hashem only chose 55 of them to be uh, mentioned in the Tanakh specifically because their words were not only relevant to uh, the uh, their generation and what they were talking about, but rather the words were relevant to, uh, to our generation, to every generation. And uh, we go to the prophet Micha. We go to the prophet Micha and uh, we see that Micha, in essence, just like the rest of the prophets, uh, tell us literally a story uh, that is, if you would appear in the, uh, in the head of the news, secular news tomorrow, uh, people would say, yeah, we already know this, but why are you using strange language? It's all the same thing. We've already heard Meaning in so many words, 
uh, everything that they're saying here is uh, something that we're seeing in the news as we speak. The same goes with uh, the prophet Nachum, uh, which Bezat Hashem will go into a little further at some point, maybe today a little bit. Uh, but uh, we see that the last chapter of the prophet Nachum, chapter 3, uh, literally, if you read it and understand it, it gives you a detailed picture of everything that's transpired over the last few weeks. Detailed picture from, from the worst, to, from the best to the worst. Uh, the prophet Micha does something similar where uh, in chapter 7, the prophet is talking to the enemies of Am Yisrael, to Am Yisrael, what's going to happen? What, why is this happening? And the prophet is saying, in the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the following, Do not rejoice, this is in uh, chapter 7 verse 8, Do not rejoice over me, my enemy, for though I fell, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, Hashem is light unto me. Here, first and foremost, we're telling, and Kadosh Baruch Hu is telling, all of the enemies of Am Yisrael that feel like they've won because they murdered and massacred several thousand Jews, much more than what the media and the governments are telling you, uh, and uh, certainly uh, have uh, traumatized many more. And people are rejoicing over this around the world. They're rejoicing over the dead people because they love death as much as we love life. Well, they have literally nearly 2 billion people praying for the demise of and the death and destruction of the Jewish people. We have, Baruch Hashem, just you know, less than 20 million people that are achieving things that are contributing to the entire world, whether it's nearly 200 Nobel Prizes, major discoveries that were made in the science world, in the mathematics world, technology world, uh, you know, uh, medical world. The Jewish people are productive people, uh, whether they're religious or not. But the reality is that uh, the prayers of the enemy are now being answered. They're now being answered where they were allowed to break the fence, they were allowed to kill some of us, they were allowed to torment all of us uh, in one way or another with all of the protests and all of the celebrations. And uh, I, you know, I can't tell you that there is a... Uh, uh, one uh, one Jewish person that has contacted me over the last month that hasn't had a little bit of fear in him and anxiety in them at some point uh, because of what's going on in the world. Everyone that's, whether they're living in the United States or in Israel or anywhere else, people are very, very concerned about what's going on. Is this the end of the world? What's going to happen? What should I do with my kids? Uh, should I do this? Should I do that? And people are, uh, you know, very, very nervous right now to say the least. And part of the reason is because of how much the enemy is rejoicing. You know, in the past, when there were terror attacks, you know, usually these things, uh, or even wars, these things usually, uh, you know, would, would affect some people, but the vast majority of the Jewish world was unaffected. This is the first time that uh, I remember, uh, at least uh, from, from my lifetime, that uh, the entire Jewish world feels in one way or another impacted directly by what's been happening over the last month uh, to the point of uh, thinking about making ma major adjustments in their life. Uh, the good news is, is that there's also a spiritual awakening by many people that realize that uh, whatever belief system and ideology that they had until now, if it wasn't the Torah, uh, then uh, it's a, uh, it simply failed them. And even people within the Torah world realize that they have to make certain adjustments and do tshuva, uh, simply because this is all of our fault. It's happening because of all of us. It's not happening just because of the secular people, and it's not hope happening just because of uh, the religious people. It's happening because of all of us, as all, all of Am Yisrael are responsible for each other. But one of the things that is also uh, causing a lot of people a, uh, a lot of anxiety as far as what's going on and how this one is different than all the other times uh, that we've seen is the amount of rejoicing that's being done around the world by uh, different people from different countries. I mean, I just uh, now I heard 
uh, earlier today, if, maybe a few hours ago, uh, that somebody uh, sent me a video from uh, uh, Dagestan, uh, there in Russia, where they're uh, going from uh, door to door in a shopping center and different places, looking for Jews, uh, either to kill them or supposedly to kick them out of the country. Uh, the same level of uh, fear is being in, uh, instilled into Jews that still live in Turkey, which is uh, certainly a life danger. Uh, you know, in the United States, uh, you know, young young kids that are. Uh, uh, you know, showing up to these pro-Palestinian and Hamas terrorist uh, uh, protests that don't agree with them. Obviously, when you know you're normal, you don't agree with pro-Palestinian or pro-Hamas. Uh, but uh, they're not going to let you disagree with them. They beat people up, and uh, you know, in, in some cases, literally put people's lives in danger. So the uh, the truth is that this celebration and rejoicing that's happening by the enemy is unprecedented. It's all over the media. It's all over uh, the uh, every town, um, and uh, it's mayhem uh, in the uh, you know it's mayhem in different places, and it's mayhem that uh, uh, certainly could get much much worse in a very short period of time, because if you have uh, you know literally uh, more people protesting. Uh, as, as pro Hamas uh, and anti uh, uh, Jewish, then people even live in Gaza. Okay, it's just, most people don't realize that Gaza is a very small place. There's maybe, maybe 2 million Palestinians living there. Uh, there isn't any Jews living there, at least people that know that they're Jewish, because unlike Israel, that allows anybody and everybody in. And you can live in peace here as long as you're a decent, civil human being. Uh, you can enter, you can come here, whether you come from Africa or you come from America or you come from Canada or you come from uh, Mexico or China, wherever you come from, you're welcome to come in. In fact, even if you come from uh, the Palestinian terries, uh, territories, you could, uh, you could come here, you could even become president. Uh, the, uh, some of the biggest judges... Uh, in the Supreme Court of Israel are, uh, are Arabs, uh, Palestinians, and uh, some of the uh, uh, top, uh, top people in, uh, in, in government are, uh, are, uh, you know, are not Jewish and are actually Palestinians. Uh, in so many words, anyone can enter Israel and uh, live a uh, decent, peaceful life. But if, you know, if 50 Jews entered Gaza then it would become 50 hostages, if they would even survive at all, to be hostages. Uh, that is the significant difference between the two different places. Okay, Gaza that was under Israel's control just until 15, 16 years ago or 18 years ago, uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the government did not listen to uh, the Chachamim, especially Rabbi Vad Yosef, when he told them not to give it back to them, that they're actually putting Jewish lives at risk by giving back this location and actually uh, physically removing the Jewish people that were living there, about 8,000 Jewish people were living there, uh, and uh, they physically removed them, they even removed the, the, the Jewish people that were buried there, desecrating the dead. A lot of horrible things were done by the Zionist government against its own people, thinking that they're going to attain peace as a result of giving these terrorists land. And they went against Da'at Torah, and instead of getting the uh, the peace that they thought, literally within 24 hours of giving the Palestinians control of Gaza, the terrorism erupted and they already attacked Israel, started shooting rockets at them. Now obviously any smart government or any smart anyone uh, that sees that this is the reaction you get, immediately reneges on the offer and Im immediately removes these terrorists from power. What do they do? Nothing. They gave them more money, they gave them more water, they gave them more electric, they gave them more of everything, thinking that just, you know, if they keep feeding this monster, eventually it's going to become full. And unfortunately, not only were they wrong, but they were wrong, and that caused countless lives, countless lives over the last 18 years, including the several thousand lives that have been uh, lost in this last couple of weeks. And uh, what we're seeing now is that even the people that were pro-Palestinian terrorists, pro-Hamas, from the Jewish side, 
even they are actually starting, some of them, at least most of them, are starting to wake up and realize that uh, we made a mistake. We made a mistake because look at how they're celebrating our death. This means that not only is there no peace, but there can never be peace. Anyone that tells you that there's going to be a two-state solution or any state solution where Jews uh, the, the, of Yaakov and Ishmael are going to be in peace are, is simply living a delusion. It's just simply not possible. There is no peace. En shalom Hashem reshaim. There's no peace with the reshaim. As long as somebody wants to annihilate you, there's, cannot be no, uh, there cannot be any peace. And it's important for people to understand that you know, all of the different uh, allies and uh, that we have on our side, it's a, again, it's allies with interest. It's allied with interest and uh, the allies can easily turn into enemies as well. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch is the one that's running the world. Not the armies, not the government, not anything else. And the moment the person puts faith in a army, in a weapon, in a government, in a person, they're bound to be disappointed. And that's one of the things that the Torah says, that a, uh, a person that puts faith in anything but Hashem is cursed from above. And that's why you should never ever think for a moment that uh, anyone can help you or hurt you other than Hashem. You should never be scared of anything but Hashem, and you should never expect any, any uh, salvation from anyone but Hashem. If you're connected to Hashem, there's no reason for you to be scared of anything. If you're not connected to Hashem, you're going to be scared of everything. And if you say, no, no, I, I'm, I'm scared of Hashem, but I'm also scared of the terrorists are going to attack me. I'm scared of Hashem, but I'm also scared of this uh, Zionist government. I'm scared of Hashem, but I'm also scared of... Uh, ta, 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 ta. No, no, no. If you're scared of anyone other than Hashem, that means you're not scared of Hashem. You're scared of many things. You're, you know, because Hashem runs the world. And Od Milvado. There's nothing else but Him. The moment you have a fear from anyone else other than Hashem, that means that you are unfortunately splitting the kinghood of the world, into multiple things. Into multiple things. And therefore, we need to know that the prophecy that I'm telling you over here, from the prophet Micha, is not my opinion, it's not Micha's opinion, and in fact, it's Akadosh Baruch Hu telling us that he is the one that's allowing the enemy to rejoice. He's the one that's allowing the enemy to rejoice. But he also says to the enemy, that wants to rejoice, that wants the downfall of the Jewish people. They wanted to rejoice, he allowed them to rejoice. But they're not going to have the ability to rejoice forever. And therefore he says, Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. For though I fell, I will rise. Though I sit in the darkness, Hashem is a light unto me. I shall bear the fury of Hashem, for I have sinned unto him, until he will take up my cause and execute judgment for me. See here, the difference between where we are today and where the prophet is talking is that at this point, the prophet is telling us that we realize that the reason why Hashem is allowing them to rejoice, the reason why Hashem is allowing them to kill, the reason why Hashem is allowing them to win the hearts of different people around the world is because of our sins, because we sinned unto Him. I shall bear the fury of Hashem for I have sinned unto him. Meaning he's allowing, he's allowing all of these horrible things to happen to us because we sinned. Because we did not follow the Torah. Because instead of following the Torah, we followed our desires. Instead of following the Torah, we followed our own interest. Instead of following the Torah, we were too worried about everything else but the Torah. But now we realize we made a mistake. We realize that there's nothing for us to rely on other than our Father in Heaven. We can't rely on a government. We can't rely on an army. We can't rely on a, uh, allies. We can't rely on ships. can't rely on anything else. Only our Father in Heaven. And if we truly do that, Rabbi Karim, this is the answer. This is the cure. This is the win over all of the protests and all of the wars. But how long is it going to be? before we realize that the Prophet was saying the words of God and not the words of opinions in media and, 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 and headlines. And then he continues, he meaning Hashem, he will bring me out into the light. I will behold his righteousness. 
Then my enemy will see, and shame will cover her. She who said unto me, Where is Hashem your God? My eyes will behold her. Now she will be for trampling, like mud in the streets. Instead of worrying about all of the allies that we can have, and all of the surprised enemies that we have, the Prophet says, all you need is a Kadosh Baruch Hu. All you need is a Kadosh Baruch Hu, as He will bring you into the light. Why? Because you became righteous. You did tshuva. You said, Hashem, I'm sorry I didn't keep Shabbat. From now on, I'm keeping Shabbat. Hashem, I'm sorry I was walking around not modest. From now on, I'm going to walk around only modest and all of the not modest clothes, I'm throwing them away and cutting them up and destroying them. Hashem, I'm sorry for eating non-kosher. From now on, only kosher. Hashem, I'm sorry for saying Lashon Hara. Hashem, I'm sorry about speaking against the Torah and against Chachamim. Hashem, I'm sorry about going against you and disregarding the Torah and thinking it's just a history book. Hashem, I'm sorry I didn't spend more time learning Torah. Instead of it, I learned everything else. I learned about other religions. I learned about other philosophies. I learned about other fields. I learned everything except the Torah. I'm sorry, Hashem. But I need you. And the Prophet says that Hashem will bring us out to the light because we do tshuva. And then my enemy will see and shame will cover her. She who said to me, where is Hashem your God? My eyes will behold her. Now she will be for trampling like mud in the streets. You want Am Yisrael to win? You want all of the enemies that are cursing us, beating us up, killing us, protesting and yelling without any hesitation, their desire to annihilate us, chasing us, tormenting us, you want them to lose? You want them to be trampled? You want them to become like mud? HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us a cheat sheet answer. Very simple. You want to win? You want to win? You do tshuva. And then when you do real tshuva, you'll even merit, the Prophet says, to see the enemy get trampled like mud. And then he continues in verse 11. The day to rebuild your fences, that day is far away in a distant time. That day exists. And he will come against you. From Assyria to the fortified cities. From Egypt to the Euphrates River. From the western Mediterranean Sea. And from mountain to mountain. And the land will be desolate with its inhabitants. As the fruit of their actions. Here HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling us something very very scary. That this war. This war begins by these fences being broken, just like they were broken a few weeks ago. Instead of thinking about rebuilding the fences, you're going to realize that there is a much bigger battle. Because they're going to come against you from all places, from all corners, just like they're all threatening to do right now. For people that are asking, the foolish question about what should the Palestinians do that live in Gaza if you're going to bomb everything? What should they do? They should go to another Jewish resort in Egypt called the Pyramids. We built it. Go live there. What do we care where the enemy goes? They want to annihilate us. You think we should care about where they live? Their housing? Okay, listen. We built... Pretty big resort in Egypt over there a few thousand years ago. Go use it. It's not being used by anybody else. Go to the mountains. Go to hell. What do we care where they go? They want to annihilate us. Why should we care? Oh, but what about the civilians? There is no such thing as civilians in Gaza. There is no such thing as civilians. Why? They are the ones that voted for Hamas, the terror organization, to rule over the land. They're the ones that empower them. They're the ones that enable them. 
Anyone that thinks otherwise is simply blind or stupid. And only foolish government like Israel would tolerate this situation up till now until we see dead bodies in the streets, literally. And unfortunately, even the ones that we thought our allies are quickly turning around and now all of a sudden the U.S. government is telling them, no, maybe you're doing too much. What too much? What are you talking about too much? They want to annihilate us. Forget about what they just did. If they had the ability to do even more. Look how they're protesting all over the world. Instead of helping us get rid of this tzarat, this skin disease, the Americans give them $100 million as if money is going to solve the problem. What are they going to do? They're just going to buy more rockets. You just fund the terrorism. But don't think for a moment that this is anything other than a Kadosh Baruch Hu allowing us to be in this situation, in this circumstance where we quickly realize we have nothing to rely on, no one to rely on other than a Kadosh Baruch Hu. A Kadosh Baruch Hu is putting us in a circumstance that we haven't been in for a very, very long time. Because the attack is coming from everywhere. And eventually it leads to a land that will be desolate with its inhabitants as the fruit of their actions, meaning a complete disaster. Who will survive this last war? Only those that cleave on to Hashem. If you cleave on to Hashem, you do complete tshuva, you're assured by every one of the prophets that talked about the end of the days, you'll be protected because the last exile, the last exodus, it's not like the first one. The righteous are promised protection in this last one that we're in right now. But that's only if you believe that only HaKadosh Baruch can help you. If you think the army can help you, if you think the government's going to help you, if you're worried about anything other than your relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you have a very serious problem. If you're afraid of what you're watching in the news and not afraid of Hashem, you have a serious problem. Why? Akadosh Baruch Hu is going to put each and every single one of us at a moment of truth we will realize en od milvado, there's nothing else but Him. The terrorists don't exist unless He allows them to exist. The enemies don't exist unless He allows them to exist. Nothing exists unless He allows it to exist. The moment we realize that He is the one that can help me he is the one that can hurt me. He is the only thing that exists. Nothing else exists. The moment we realize that, we're okay. Until we're there, we're in danger. And anyone that thought, oh, perhaps, just like the many other wars they saw Israel in over the years, or the terror attacks, whether it's the one from last year, where they, at the same time last year when I was here, they fired uh, over 600 rockets at Israel, or the ones from before, and the countless other times where people that live in Europe, in America, in different places around the world, you know, they saw it in the news, oh, too bad, and then they go back to their shawarma sandwich, they go back to their BMW, they go back to their uh, internet surfing, oh, that's too bad, yeah, I'll pray, I'll pray, maybe I'll give some staka to, you know, make, uh, make my uh, nerves calm down a little bit, and then they go back, to uh, their uh, beach club. This time, HaKadosh Baruch is making that every single Jew is affected by it. Even the Jew that hates the Jews is affected by it. Even the Jews that hate the Jews are affected by it. Why? They're being forced to show their side openly. Admit that they're an enemy of even their own people. And this is part of the fruit of their actions. And the prophet continues. And he says, As in the days when you left the land of Egypt, I will show it wonders. 
the nations will see and be ashamed of all their unveiling power. Unavailing power. They will place a hand over their mouth. Their ears will become deaf. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that if we really hold on to him, instead of some cracker on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, media that's uh, uh, telling them that uh, they can or they can't do things, as if he knows anything. These people that have never even been in Israel, feel like they have uh, the, the right or the knowledge of telling, how, telling Israel how to, and what they should do. Literally. People that have done a lot of drugs in their life have turned themselves into crackheads, think that they have the ability to tell the Jewish people what they should and they shouldn't do and how they should fight terrorism and what's really, the, uh, what's really uh, causing uh, so much harm. Listening to these media people, whether it's on YouTube, or on the news, and the TVs, is poisoning your mind and distancing you away from God. Distancing you away from God. You want to know a little bit of what's happening? Read a headline, 30 second video, just to see how the headline matches the news, the end. Why? Everything's in the Torah. Kadosh Mok already gave us the instructions of what... We need to do at this time. The fact that the world is showing its colors and how much they hate us is not news. It's surprising it took this long. Anyone that thinks that the world will go back to being okay like the many other times it has in the past, you have to realize the world has taken a sharp turn. A sharp turn where... For the last 70 years or so, or 70 years after the Holocaust, anti-Semitism was frowned upon, was boycotted, people lost their careers and livelihoods if they became openly anti-Semitic in many places. But in the last several years, anti-Semitism has slowly but surely become acceptable in society to the point where you have millions of people around the world screaming at the top of their lungs how much they hate the Jews and how they want to kill them. And this is allowed. And yet, they have the audacity to call this a legitimate protest. Go and try and do this about any other nation. Go and try and do a protest against the Americans. Go gather a couple of million Mexicans and tell them, we are against the Americans and we sh- you should annihilate us. You should be annihilated. Why? You took our rights. Or have the native Indians have a protest. You Americans took our land. Or have anybody do that in America. You'd be surprised if they survived the day to tell the news what they actually did. Same concept in any other place. But against the Jews? Free hunting. Say what you want. How? Look, it says in the law, freedom of speech, freedom of this, freedom of that. They show you, they all have all these clever people on their uh, evil empire staff telling you which part of the law and which country allows them to say that you're allowed to kill Jews, that they want to kill Jews. Why, why Why is it allowed to do that to the Jews and nobody else? Why if you went in the streets and you said you wanted to kill Chinese people, you're not going to survive the day? If you said you wanted to kill Arab people, you won't survive the day. You said you wanted to kill black people, you won't survive the day. Any other people, you won't survive the day. But Jewish people, go for it. How come? They say, look, it's freedom of speech. Well, how come I can't have the same freedom of speech to do the same thing for anybody else? If I say anything negative against LGBTQ, they shut you down. Anything negative about a different race, they shut you down. Why? Because this is the hand of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is the hand of HaKadosh Baruch Hu telling us, I'm the one that decides how the leaders are going to lead. The ones that do wicked, I allow them to lead when 
punishment comes. The ones that do good, I shut them down. When the times to be punished. When times are not to be punished, I let the ones that do good, do good. But as we can see over the last decade, we have one horrible news after another, even when there were certain people that st- theoretically wanted to do good. Why? Because the Jewish people weren't doing good. Whether it's celebrating homosexuality in the streets, or all of these horrible things against Hashem, going against the Torah, these things are not helping us. Let's just say that. And that's why Hashem says here, this land becomes desolate, it's the fruit of their actions. But one day this will all come to an end. The question is whether you're going to be involved in it, whether you're going to be part of it, which side you're going to be on. Did you keep Torah and Mitzvot? Did you say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem, I know there's nothing else but you. I thought maybe the news can help me, or the army can help me, or the gun that I have helped me, or the, uh, the, the guy I know in the Air Force helped me, or maybe the uh, law helped me. But I realize now nothing can help me other than Hashem. And that's why I'm 100% with you, Hashem. I'm going to do all the mitzvot you told me to do. I'm going to do everything you said. And every day if I make a mistake, please I'm, uh, forgive me because I'm going to try again. If you do that, you're going to be on a good side. And that's why Hashem says that salvation to those people that do tshuva will come. And part of that salvation will be to see their enemies destroyed. As He says in the days when you left Egypt, I will show you wonders. What wonders? What wonders are you going to talk about? Bigger wonders than we saw in Egypt. The nations will see and be ashamed of their unavailing power. All of the power they have right now, whether it's the power and size, how many of them there is versus how many of us, the weapons, the control, all the things they think they have. HaKadosh Baruch says that they will come, that all of these enemies... All of these nations will be ashamed of the power they have. Why? Because they'll realize that as much power as they have, as much atomic bombs as they have, as much tanks and uh, and missiles they have, as much airplanes they have, as much money as they have, as much, as much, as much, as much, even if you multiply it by a billion and a trillion, to the power of infinity, will become worthless once they see the wrath of God. And nations will see and be ashamed of all their unavailing power. They'll place a hand over their mouth. (gasps) Their ears will become deaf. They will lick the dirt like the snake and like creatures that crawl on the ground. This is the prophet saying, not me. Chapter 7, verse 15 through 17. They will lick the dirt like the snake and like creatures that crawl on the ground. They will tremble from their places of confinement because they're hiding once the wrath of God comes. Once they realize that Kadosh Baruch Hu is only picking them, only the enemies of a Kadosh Baruch Hu will be punished. If you observe the Torah, you observe the mitzvot. You follow what HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you have nothing to worry about. You're a righteous Gentile, you have nothing to worry about. Righteous according to the Torah, not according to some hocus pocus book called the Quran, a New Testament, a False Testament, or Buddha, Shmuda, only the Torah. Everything else is fake. Anyone that follows the Torah will see this day. Wonders that you will see will be greater than the wonders we saw in Egypt. It was a much, much stronger country and civilization than any country in the world today. Anyone that's deluded like this Biden who thinks that America is the strongest country ever simply hasn't read history. America may be strong, but they don't have world domination or even close to it. 
Egypt had world domination. Babylon had world domination. Assyria had world domination. Greece, Rome, they had world domination. Much more than what America has. And they're all in the history books. Gone. Why? HaKadosh Baruch Hu ended them. He allowed them to exist. He allowed them to disappear. And any enemy of Am Yisrael will be in the same position. But this time, they'll see it firsthand. What happens to the enemies of Am Yisrael? Whether they're Jewish enemies or non-Jewish enemies. Anyone that's an enemy of Am Yisrael and its Torah, enemies of the Torah means enemy of God. Enemies of the Jewish people means an enemy of God. HaKadosh Baruch Hu promises them that the day will come and they will see these wonders and they'll be ashamed of their power. They'll literally be in shock with their hands covering their mouth like, oh yeah, yeah, this too. I can't believe this is happening. This is so embarrassing. Look what he's doing to us. Look how he's annihilating us. Look how we're helpless. Look how the weapons disintegrate to nothing. Look how we cannot even fire a bullet. Look how the planes don't fly. Look how we can't even hear. Nothing. And they literally will fall into the dirt and start crying from the embarrassment that they'll get on that day. And they will lick the dirt like the snake and like creatures that crawl on the ground. And they will tremble from those places of confinement. And they will fear Hashem our God and be afraid of you. What does it mean be ashamed, be afraid of Hashem and you? Meaning ultimately, when that great day comes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu promises us to the righteous Jews, to the righteous people that follow the Torah. Do you know how you know when it's over? Do you know how you know when you're going to have peace? Real peace? When the whole world is not only afraid of Hashem, but by default also afraid of the righteous people. Who is like you? Who is a God like you? Who pardons iniquity and overlooks transgressions for the remnant of his heritage. He does not maintain his wrath forever for he desires kindness. He will once again show us mercy. He will suppress our iniquities. You will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Grant truth to Yaakov, kindness to Avram, as you swore to our forefathers in the days of old. Here HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Micha the last prophecy, to letting us know that if you want this great to be part of this great day, where no one will ever protest against Hashem or His people, but in fact, they'll be terrified that even their grandparents did. You want to be part of that? You have to do tshuva. And Hashem says, no one will ever treat you like me. Why? You do something wrong to your wife, she may or may not forgive you. You cheat on her, most women won't forgive. And even the ones that forgive, they won't forget. You do something wrong against the government, most of the time they won't forgive. And even if they forgive, it's under certain conditions and they certainly don't forget. You keep doing that wrong thing, certainly they won't forgive and they won't forget. And they don't forgive because they don't forget. You do anything wrong against your community, forgiving and forgetting will be subject to individuals. While some will choose not to, Others may. Point being is, Hashem is telling you, no one is like me. Well, I'm willing to pardon your iniquity. Overlook your transgressions. You, your family, I don't want to punish you. I don't want to keep this 
wrath upon you forever. I desire kindness, he says. I want to show you mercy. What's the mercy? Mercy is not overlooking everything and simply letting you continue living like a beast. It's against the Torah and against God. No. Once you do tshuva and you make my Torah the number one priority in your life, not only will I forgive you, not only will I make it seem as if you never sinned, but on top of it all, all of the reasons that led you to this place, which is you're afraid of the goyim, you're afraid of all these nations, you're afraid of all these Arabs, you're afraid of all these Hamas terrorists and their supporters, you're afraid of Ishmael, you're afraid of Edom, you're afraid of Amalek, you're afraid of this, you're afraid of that. You didn't really come to me because all of a sudden one day you woke up and you loved the Torah. No, you came to me because you're afraid and you realize you have no other hope other than Hashem. I'll still forgive you. In fact... Once you start going into the Torah, you'll realize just how much HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves you. And He's been waiting for you. And looking forward for you to wear that dress that's modest. Has been looking forward to you covering your hair because you are married. Has been looking forward to you sending your kids to yeshiva. Has been looking forward to you keeping Shabbat. Has been looking forward for you to protect your breed. Has been looking forward for you to do finally do real tshuva and stop being a faker. Has been looking forward to that day. Why? Because that day he can really show you how much he loves you and how much mercy he has upon you. And he'll even give you the gift of showing you the wrath of God upon all of the enemies that caused you fear. All of those that supported the enemy are no different than the enemy. And he'll let you see all of that. But if you don't, if you don't do tshuva, Mr. Jew or non-Jew, if you don't do tshuva, Mrs. Jews or non jews And you should know, you'll be judged together with the enemy. Because you'll become one. This Rabotai Ekerim is what a person needs to realize. That right now, there is no safe zone. There is no safe place. There's only Akadosh Baruch Hu. Don't waste your time trying to figure out a safer living place or a safer gun or a safer this or a safer that. You want a safe zone? It's called do teshuva. Repent for your crimes against God and follow the Torah. At this time, each and every single person that's watching all the way till now should already be thinking of at least one or two things that they know they need to take upon themselves. Speak less on the phone with your girlfriend so there's no Lashon Ra. Wear a modest clothes exclusively and only. Stop it with those long exotic wigs. Cover your hair like Sarai Menu. Sarai is complimented for our beauty despite her covering our hair completely with a mitpachat. Not a single woman is, is, is complimented in a positive way in the Torah because of how provocative she was or how uh, she showed off her hair or her body. The only real compliment that matters is a compliment from a Kadosh Baruch Hu. It's time that we act like He wants us to because to our benefit. Each person should be thinking about what they should be doing. If you know that you can't control yourself on the internet, shut the internet off. Although I don't think that's necessarily a solution, but at the very least, censor yourself from places that you know you can't handle. Download the app for the Bezat Hashem, watch only our shurim, and that's it. You don't need the internet for anything else. If you can't handle it. If you have a job where you know that you keep looking at certain people in appropriate ways, Find a new job. Work from home. If 
you know that your kosher is not really so kosher, you have to change. If you know that your business is not exactly kosher, don't even ask about whether there's a way to do it in a kosher way. Just leave the business, start something else. Work for something else. It's not worth it for you to be on the side of the enemy when that great, awesome day of God comes. Right now, Rabotai Karim, the only safe zone is the Torah. Even if things seem to calm down, don't take that calm as a good sign. Just take it as an opportunity to do more tshuva before the next shoe drops. Certainly the Satan will try to confuse more people, start turning it into a political issue. Oh, the Shafir Bibi Netanyahu. Oh, the Shafir, the uh, head of the uh, defense. Oh, do you know that there's some uh, you know, lefty liberals that actually knew that this attack was going to take place before it did because there's a few videos of them saying that it's going to happen and maybe they didn't know it's going to be that bad. And oh, it's treason. Oh, we should arrest them. All this stuff, it's going to come up. Don't spend a single minute into that trap. Why? Because that trap is going to make you think that, oh, if the defense was better, then it wouldn't happen. If the army was there, then it wouldn't happen. If the president was this one, then it wouldn't happen. If the lefty liberals weren't such pieces of garbage, then it wouldn't happen. If this, it wouldn't happen. If that, this wouldn't happen. All of that is heresy. All of it. Why? En od milvado. There's nothing else but HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that did it because of what we did. Because of what we did. If each and every single one of us watching this video takes one thing upon themselves, speak less Lashon learn an extra few minutes or hours of Torah each day, uh, do more Kiruv, support more Torah, Something, if each and every single person takes something upon themselves, then already, HaKadosh Baruch Hu can see that your heart is not made of stone. And there is more hope for you. But if you watch this, and you've watched all the videos that we did over the last few weeks, and needless to say the ones over the last several years, and you still don't have a desire to change anything, you don't have a desire to take on anything else, then you should know. You are judging yourself to be put into the wrong side on that great big day of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Please, take these words seriously. It's dangerous out there. And the only one that can help us is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Once you know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with you, you can go back to being as happy as can be. You can walk in the streets. You can take your kids to go eat something without worrying about some missile landing on your head. You can go and do a big Torah celebration tomorrow, sanctify Kadosh Baruch Hu's name without being worried about some type of terror attack or some type of this attack or some type of any. Why? Because you know that Kadosh Baruch Hu is the one that runs the world. When you know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu runs the world, there's nothing to be scared of. Stop being scared of anything about HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But if you're still scared, then watch this again, and again, and again. Until you're not. If it doesn't help, watch our Bitachon series. Watch the first 20 lectures of the Jewish Ashkafa series. Watch any of the lectures that we've done over the years and see the countless reasons of why there's nothing to be scared of other than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And when you're scared of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it creates happiness ultimately. It creates a peace of mind. It removes the anxiety because you know that nothing can help you or hurt you other than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The protests are certainly scary for people who don't have God. The government and political situation, terrifying for people who don't have God. 
The weapons of mass destructions and the easy way to launch them, petrifying for people who don't have God. The moral demise of society over the last decade, horrible for anyone who doesn't have God. When you have God, you have everything. When you don't, all you have is problems. Choose wisely. I'll see if there's any major questions that we could answer that are relevant, and we'll go from there. I'm not Jewish, but I'm a Roma gypsy, and we understand you better than any non-Jew. We will always be by your side. Thank you very much. It's good for you. It's benefit for your benefit. I'm Native Mexican American, and the church has brainwashed a lot of my people to hate Jewish people. That's unfortunate. You should get them to watch our lectures, and they realize that the church is lying to them, not just about the Jewish people, but even about their faith and who, what the truth is about God. You can go to my website and you could uh, see under the uh, lectures and subjects, see there's a uh, uh, different lectures and uh, material over there about Christianity and the church and how it's all one big lie. I mean, quite frankly, anyone that follows what's going on in the Christian Catholic world right now knows that it's a whole big joke right now. Uh, you know, the Pope is uh, supposed to be the most religious person out there, but yet he's, you know, He's pro-homosexuality, he's pro-everything against uh, what's the uh, supposedly the foundation of uh, Christianity. Uh, so if the most religious person is uh, against the foundation, then who's, who's going to be more religious than him? The whole thing is one big lie, and uh, the church is lying to you guys about everything, not just about the Jewish people. The, the sooner you guys realize it, the sooner you'll be able to uh, get on the right path. Uh, Yeshua gave his life yeah he gave his life to uh, fools he gave his life what life did he give he was a uh, person that uh, simply could not control his uh, desires and uh, ended up uh, losing his eternity because of it. Should stop following fairy tales. Do I hate Mexicans? No, I don't hate anybody unless they hate me. Unless they hate my people, unless they hate God. As far as uh, whether a person is a Jewish, Gentile, of any type of descent and heritage, makes no difference to us. There's Jews of all types, first of all, and second of all, uh, it's not based on, you know, what traditions the, uh, the person practices, but rather what his beliefs are and what they practice as far as their day-to-day -day life. If they are enemies of God, and certainly they're enemies of the Jewish people. If they are uh, people that are decent human beings, uh, even if they're mistaken about certain parts of their beliefs, but they're decent human beings, there's no problem with them. But you should know that there are many Jews that live in Mexico and uh, already for many, many years, and um, they don't have any problem with the uh, Mexican people. No, it doesn't make a difference what, uh, what you are.
Okay. Uh, what would you recommend to someone who desires to start conversion process in Israel at this time? And how much time do you think it would take to convert to Judaism? Uh, well, to start conversion in Israel, you have to move to Israel, first of all. You have to move to Israel, you have to meet a uh, rabbi that uh, you know speaks your language and is willing to take you under his wing, if you will, uh, to give you some guidance. Uh, you'll have to go and take you to the Rabbanut. Conversion, you know, it certainly can take uh, you know a year, two years, three years, four years. It depends on the person. It could take as little as a year. It could take uh, many years. It depends on how committed a person is. But I've always told people never to put a uh, time on how long it takes you to convert because either way, whether you convert today or you convert in a year from now, the things that you're doing as far as the, uh, the mitzvot and the lifestyle, it's what, you, what you do during conversion is what you'll have to do during your life as a Jew. So it doesn't really make a difference uh, whether you convert in one year or in two years. As long as you're doing the right things, you'll be in the right path. Will everyone keep the land they own when the Mashiach comes, or will it revert back to ancestral portions? Uh, well, everyone's going to have plenty of uh, uh, plenty of land. The Mashiach is also going to uh, unveil the uh, the different tribes. Uh, you know, many of them that we don't know where they are anymore. Uh, but one of the biggest things that's going to happen is that the land of Israel is going to be much much bigger than what it is now. In so many words, it's, a, it's going to be uh, uh, something beyond the uh, scope of our imagination because everyone will have uh, more than enough space. No one will have uh, any lackings whatsoever. Uh, so, I spoke Lashona against the Rav a few years ago. Please call the Rav, forgive me. It depends what you said. And it depends uh, who else you're publicizing it to. If all the people that you spoke about, uh, about me or the Torah, uh, know that you're apologizing and you're mistaken, then there's no problem. I have no personal issues with you. I don't even know who you are. Uh, and even if I did, I wouldn't have a problem with you saying anything about me. Uh, but if uh, what you said caused other people to not watch the Shurim, caused other people to forsake the Torah, then you have to go make sure to tell them that you made a mistake. It's your tikkun uh, is, is not with me. Your tikkun is with Hashem. You have to fix your problem with Hashem that you have if you caused other people to not listen to the Torah. And if you really are someone that wants to do tshuva, then you'll go do it and you'll publicize to whoever listened to you. Listen, I said such and such against Rabbi Reuven, against the Torah he teaches. I made a mistake. And uh, just like I publicized it freely, that I, uh, the, 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 the rotten things that I said, I'm uh, publicizing it freely that I made a mistake and I'm doing shiva publicly and to make sure that those people see it, at least do all of your effort. Do all of your effort that uh, uh, to fix to fix what you did and Bezot Hashem, Hashem will forgive you. As far as me personally, it doesn't make a difference to me. You know, Compliments or insults are the same to me. It doesn't make much of a difference to me. Uh, but uh, if you really want to do tshuva, you'll have to fix it in the same way you broke, you have to fix If a person overall is a righteous person yet shows a lot of selfish attribute, should one give them a benefit of the doubt? Selfish means the opposite of righteous. You cannot be selfish and righteous at the same time. Uh, you know, if a person is righteous, that means that they're selfless. Selfless. Now, they could be a decent person, uh, but to say righteous, it's a... Uh, no. They cannot be so, so selfish and righteous. Those are, their, you know, opposites. Um, it's like uh, saying someone is a, uh, he's really, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say something that's going to insult people, but the point is, it's a, it's, it doesn't make sense. Say selfish and, and, uh, and righteous at the same time is not possible. Uh, as far as benefit of the doubt, it depends what the benefit of the doubt is. If the benefit of the doubt is something that the person never violates before, let's say, for example, the person is religious, and uh, you suddenly see this person driving on Shabbat. Uh, if you know this person is a religious person, then certainly you should give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe there's somebody in the back seat that they're taking to the hospital, and it's life risk. But if this person is a, uh, let's say, for example, if he was uh, known to be a thief, 
known to be a thief, and uh, because he's been caught several times, it's known that this person's a thief. Every time uh, he goes to somebody's party, they're missing. Uh, they end up missing the furniture. <laughs> so, and all of a sudden, this person tells you, "Listen, uh, you know, I want to go on a uh, trip, and I'm inviting you for free. Uh, I'll pay for the whole thing." You should assume this person stole that trip or the money to pay for the trip. Uh, why? Because they're known as a thief. Uh, so again, it depends what the benefit of the doubt is for. There are pictures of the Tulek Kalta from the big pro-Palestine protest yesterday on Shabbat. They're wearing the signs instead of carrying. How can they do this? The Netulek uh, Kalta are Reshaim Gmurim, the complete heretics. Uh, even the Rav uh, Misatmel uh, uh, kicked them out of, uh, of, of Satmel in 1967. Many people don't realize the Tulek Kalta are not part of Satmel. They are Reshaim. They're wicked. They're Mashchitim. They're, they, they connect to the Mashchitim. They connect. Uh, to wicked people, to the enemies of Am Yisrael, and uh, there's uh, no permission whatsoever to uh, look at them in any positive way, shape, or form. Once a person is mechubal la reshaim, once he is connected to the wicked people, he's judged as a wicked person. When uh, I don't care how much they hate the Zionists and the history of Zionism, the moment you become friends with terrorists, with Palestinian terrorists, with people that want to, you know, simply destroy. Jewish people without caring about anything else, uh, and you uh, connect to them, that means that you are just like them. Ish uh, lefim you are uh, uh, you are who you praise. So the fact that they are connected to them, that means that they are just like them, and there's nothing righteous about them. I'd be surprised if they even keep Shabbat. Uh, there's a uh, many many uh, people that are confused when they see them because of their uh, you know their you know the, their clothing. Uh, and the way they speak, but that's why the sages always tell us don't judge anyone based on how they look. You have to judge based on how a person acts, what they say, what they say, what they do. Don't judge on how they look. And you know the the beard grows for free, and the uh, the little uh, kippa you can buy for a few dollars. It's not uh, or hat. It doesn't take much. So you have to understand. Just because somebody has uh, Jewish garments doesn't make them a religious Jew. Doesn't make them a religious Jew. Uh, you have to understand that a re- religious Jew is based on how they behave. How they behave. If they behave like a religious Jew, good. They don't. They don't. Listen today uh, at our uh, kollel, uh, Baruch Hashem, the the guy that uh, uh, was the chazan today. He looks like a average Jew uh, without. He doesn't have the suit on. He doesn't have. He just looked. You know, he's wearing regular clothes. He had. Uh, I don't know. I guess some. I think, I think it was jeans, dark jeans and a sweater on. He had a kippah on, not a, certainly not a huge kippah. Uh, but he was chazan. We chose him to be chazan. Why? Because he's a decent human being. He's a, uh, he uh, certainly has a lot of respect for Tamid Chachamim. He uh, ha- is, is, knows Torah, and that's it. So, now, if somebody is a, uh, looks at that and says, Oh, wow, that guy doesn't look religious. No, no, I can assure you, that person is more religious than most people. He's more religious than most people. On the other hand, at other times at our Kolo, you'll see uh, pictures, and you see everybody's a black hat. Everybody looks like they uh, just came from, uh, you know, from the yeshiva, from the Kolo, and so on. And I know for a fact that sometimes some of those people they may not even know what th- this week's parasha. What's this week's parasha? Why? Because we have all types of people come. You know, it's not people that are learning this. People that are, come from all over just to pray. Some people you can see them. They may wear the garments, but they may not even know what the parasha is. And other people, they look like they're barely religious. They're about you up. But in reality, they're people that know what they're talking about. That particular guy, for example, he was part of uh, Arab Mazuz Keila for almost 10 years. So the point is, is that you can't judge people based on their, uh, their, their clothing. If they're, as long as they are not violating any mitzvot with their clothing, like they're, you know, they're, they're still modest and they're, uh, they're, they're still, you know, dressing and acting appropriately. It's a, uh, there's no problem with it. But when you, people start judging uh, a book by its cover and they think just because somebody's wearing a strimal, uh or, 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 or anything of the Hasidic clothes or they have peyot, that makes them Jewish, uh, religious. Re- you're mistaken. Mistaken. So again, the Tulei Kalta, the all Reshaim, every single one of them, because they are part of the Mashchitim. They're part of the people, the enemies of Am Yisrael. Not just the enemies of Zionism. They're part of the enemies of Am Yisrael. 
they want to annihilate Israel, which includes many, many righteous people, includes many avrichim, many tzadikim, many rabbanim, many righteous people. So to uh, to be part of such a thing is against the Torah. And that's why the Rabbi Misatmil threw them out in 1967 uh, because they were considered rogue. Uh, there was nothing righteous about them. And if the uh, Rav Teirobam, uh, Allah Shalom, threw them out, you could pretty much uh, bet the farm that uh, he knew what he was talking about. Now, as far as opinions about Zionism and so on, we've already discussed this extensively, uh, and uh, there's no, uh, no opportunity that we miss to throw jabs at Zionism. But there's a difference between, you know, hating Zionism, going against Zionism, and being a mechubal uh, l'reshaim, being connected to wicked people. There's a, there's a very, very big difference between the two. To go and celebrate with the enemy about the death of fellow Jews, even if those Jews were not uh, religious, even if those Jews were secular, to go and celebrate with the enemy that other Jews died, you're never going to see a righteous person ever do that. Never. Never. It's never, never, it's not in anybody's books. What can we say to Jews that go to mosques and use the excuse that it's not a place of idol worship? Is there a source that we can give them that it's forbidden? Sure. Uh, you have to, uh, you know, protect your, uh, your, your, your body and your soul. You can't go to a uh, mosque when you know that it's high likelihood that there is a, at least a few people within that mosque that will be more than happy to either chop your head off or turn you into a hostage or some other thing. So to go to a mosque today is simply stupid. Uh, you know, it's not it's not a smart thing to do. Uh, so I'm not really sure what why why would any Jew go into a mosque today other than the fools that try to make a YouTube video out of it, not realizing that they're putting their life at risk. As far as Messianic Judaism, Messianic Judaism is Christianity in disguise. It's 100% idol worship. Uh, as far as studying the gypsies to be a lost tribe, I know the gypsies suffered a lot in the, uh, the, the World War II. The, many of them were killed. Uh, they were uh, tormented and tortured uh, during World War II. As far as their possibility of uh, them being part of the lost tribes, it certainly is possible. We're only going to know once Mashiach comes, but I can assure you that anyone that wants to be Jewish can become Jewish by converting to Judaism. So you don't need to wait for Mashiach to tell you that uh, that you are a uh, you know a long lost ancestor of uh, of uh, of a Jewish tribe, uh, you could simply become part of the Jewish people by converting to Judaism, uh, which uh, requires change in lifestyle, change in uh, 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 customs, beliefs, and so on. But there's a whole uh, section of my website that discusses it. You go to bezatashem.org, b e e z r a t h a s h e m dot org. Uh, and uh, you go to that website in there, you'll see a section about conversion, and you could read some material, read some books, watch some lectures, and uh, see what, uh, what Judaism is about. If you really believe that, uh, you know, things that uh, the Jewish people believe, and you want to be Jewish, you can be. You don't have to worry about what ancestor you may or may not have come from. Uh, is it possible? Sure. There's a very high possibility that uh, the uh, Pashtuns uh, in Afghanistan are, uh, you know, come from uh, Jewish lineage, and uh, Pashtuns today are known as Al-Qaeda. <laughs> so they're enemies of the Jews. So uh, there's certainly possibilities that uh, most of the people that are trying to kill Jews today uh, are uh, coming from Jews, or even are Jewish, like the Palestinians. Many of them uh, are uh, a result of intermarriage and, uh, you know, between Jews and, and, and the Arabs. And many of them don't realize that uh, their mom is Jewish. And therefore, they are Jewish, and they want to kill Jews. And there's, there's more than one or two stories out there of uh, Palestinians that used to hate uh, Jews, uh, realizing later on that they actually really are Jewish. Some even say it's a very high percentage. 
Point being is, don't wait for somebody to tell you that you're Jewish. You can simply decide to be Jewish if you want to be by simply making the changes in your life and converting in order to eliminate any doubts and confirming that you not only are Jewish, but you want to be Jewish. But if you don't want to be Jewish, then what difference does it make if you came or you didn't come from certain heritage or, or tribe or not? If you, if you don't care for it, then what difference does it make where you came from? Judaism is not like a uh, tradition or a, uh, or a custom or a uh, nationality. Judaism is a lifestyle. Uh, it's a lifestyle of servitude to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Ju- Judaism is, does not depend on the Jews. Judaism depends on the Torah. Whoever follows the Torah is, is following Judaism. Whoever desecrates the Torah is not following the Judaism, even if they were born a Jew. What does the Rav think about companies that say that they're, they support Palestine? Should one boycott them entirely? Uh, example, Amazon and the like. Uh, I don't know what, uh, what Amazon or other companies have done. Uh, as far as uh, whether they support or don't support, it depends what they support, it depends what they do, it depends uh, a lot of different things. Uh, it depends how it affects your life. Uh, but I can tell you this, that if uh, a person uh, boycotted every, uh, every company that had people uh, that were in charge of marketing or in charge of a certain division or even in charge of uh, uh, big parts of the company, uh, that were anti-Semites, then you simply would not be able to do anything in life. Same way that if people boycotted Jewish goods, you know, this BDS movement, it's the stupidest movement on planet Earth. Why? Because they use the technology that Jews invented to boycott the Jews. So this whole boycotting of companies and so on, uh, you know, again, it all depends on whether it uh, it helps you or hurts you, how much it helps you, how much it hurts you. Is there a, uh, uh, a, uh, something that is, uh, uh, easily replacing it? Is it something that is hurting you more than it's hurting the company? Is it really a, uh, their opinion or is it an opinion of a few? You know, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be quick to just simply say, oh, they, look, this uh, uh, company has a flag of Palestine, therefore we should never you know, drink their drinks anymore. I don't think they really care, to be honest with you. I don't think you're doing anything uh, by, uh, uh, by not drinking their drink or buying their products because... If, uh, uh, you know, if they are big enough, they probably won't care. And if they do care, and they say, you know, no, 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 we're sorry. We don't really mean to be pro-Palestine. We love you Jews. Do you really think that makes them love Jews? No, they still hate you. They just want your business still. So the whole boycotting thing of companies, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really see, I don't see it as a, uh, a fight of anything. I think it's just, uh, um, you know, it's silly. Uh, it's, uh, it's because usually these things are also not done by the masses. It's usually done by individuals, like like vegan people. You know, they they boycott, you know, decent food. Who are they helping? Nobody. Uh, can you please give me a response to fight against the huge lie that has gone viral that all Ashkenazim are fake Kazarian Jews? Uh, this is only said by stupid people, usually coming from the Hebrew Israelites that are not Jews themselves. They're all Christians that pretend to be Jews. Uh, and uh, this is only uh, something that's, uh, um, that's you know, acknowledged or popularized by people who don't know anything about Judaism. You know, when, when someone is ignorant of Judaism and then they're judging Judaism, if you pay attention to them, that means that you know no more than they do. Uh, and it's important to know that Judaism is not based on nationality, it's not based on color, uh, it's not based on DNA, uh, it's not based on any of those things. Judaism is based on a belief system. If somebody follows the Torah, that means that they are Jewish. If someone goes against the Torah, that means that uh, they're either uh, a, a wicked Jew or they are forsaking the Torah where they're not Jewish. So it's Judaism is not based on a uh, the, the the background of somebody or uh, uh, as far as um, you know where their mother is from uh, as far as which uh, uh, you know which uh, tribe listen whether you're a tribe of Judah or tribe of Benjamin or tribe of Dan or tribe of whatever if your mother is Jewish you are a Jew if your mom is not Jewish you're not a Jew simple uh, if you converted you converted but the point is that people think that Judaism is based on color. Uh, this is simply uh, stupid people that know nothing about Judaism 
And uh, quite frankly, the more time you spend around knowledgeable Jews, the more you realize how stupid this is. Like to even think for a second that Judaism is based on color or DNA or any of that stuff, it's just uh, moronic. Now, as far as Ashkenazim, Ashkenazim is it's, it's, it's simply a group of Jews that uh, lived in Europe. Uh, that's it. It's not like a, they were uh, a different uh, sect or a different belief system. After the destruction of the Bet Migdash, Jews went all over the world. Many Jews went to the uh, uh, Africa, uh, some Jews stayed in Israel, and some Jews went to uh, Europe. Throughout the years, they spread into more countries, they went to Spain, they went to America, they went to Russia, they went to Poland, they went to uh, uh, Syria, all the Middle Eastern countries that hate us, we live there too. And the point is that Jews are all over the world. Uh, to think that all of the Ashkenazim came from the story of the Kuzari is simply stupid. Number one, because the Kuzari story was a thousand years ago. Whereas the uh, Ashkenazi Jews have a uh, tradition that goes back well, well before that. Uh, well, well more than a thousand years. Number two, again, like I said, the, 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 the source uh, that they have, or the reason why they have this uh, belief, is because they're so ignorant of Judaism is that they actually believe that almost all Jews, or almost all Jews are Ashkenazim. They have no concept of the Sephardi Jews. They have no concept of the, uh, you know, more than half the Jews in the world. They think that all of the Jews are like Seinfeld. You know, so it's, it's, it just comes from ignorance. And this is not something that is uh, uh, widely believed outside of America. Like, you're not going to find people in Europe or in uh, the Middle East or in uh, anywhere else in the world uh, that uh, believe this nonsense. This is only an American creation by these Hebrew Israelite morons that are Christians 100% because they follow the New Testament and they don't follow the Torah. So uh, I would say that uh, the amount of time that I spent on it already in the past, including today, is already more than they deserve. But point being is, uh, the only solution is not to uh, uh, debate them, but rather to simply ignore them. Because debating them is not going to help you. They're not going to change their mind. They simply choose to be stupid. I saw in your movie that you had a big struggle with health. How did you cure yourself? Watch the rest of the movie. Uh, let's see. Are we supposed to pray for everyone or, or just for those who search for the truth? Pray for everyone to search for the truth. I've been struggling with health the last 20 years with pain in my joints. Doctors say I have no sickness. However, I still have pain even with treatments. Uh, I mean, listen, it's, first you start with, you know, whatever you can do for yourself physically, you know, to, to help your situation, certainly do. Uh, but, you know, as much as that, you know, fix whatever you need to fix spiritually. Uh, if you're Jewish and obviously you're, you're not observing Torah and Mitzvot, then you need to fix it. If you are observing Torah and Mitzvot, look at what you're doing wrong. Uh, if you are doing everything right and uh, still struggling, then you should learn more about Emunah and Bitachon and understand that uh, uh, there's a value to your suffering. So it really depends on where you are in your life. What, uh, uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a simple answer. Not a simple answer. There's no one size fits all to suffering. It's, it depends on the circumstance. Uh, I think it's about it. Okay. Baruch Hashem. Okay. Bezat Hashem. Tomorrow night, uh, there's going to be a, uh, the big event. Bezat uh, Hashem. It's going to be extraordinary. It's going to go live around uh, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, I'm sorry. 7 o'clock Israel time, which is, I think, maybe what, like uh, 12 or 1 o'clock um, uh, Eastern time. Uh, point is, pay attention to the groups, to the WhatsApps, to the Facebooks, to the YouTubes, to everything, and uh, uh, look out for the note. Uh, it's going to be a few hours. We're going to do our best to make sure that uh, it's live. It's in several places. It also is going to have, uh, Bezat Hashem, 
the uh, uh, live uh, English subtitles, which Hashem, over time will also translate to other languages, but that's going to be at a later time. Uh, and uh, Hashem, we want you guys to be part with us uh, to sanctify Kadosh Baruch Hu's name, to make sure that uh, you know all of the credit goes to Hakadosh Baruch Hu and not not to us. And but most importantly, to encourage Am Yisrael and everyone around the world to do tshuva, because we are, my dear friends, on the last stop. We're on the last stop. There's not that much time. Anyone that wants to use. Uh, you know, money that Kadosh Baruch Hu gave them to donate and help us to publicize the message even more. You can go to our website. You can go to the different campaigns. Uh, there are many different ways to donate. You could donate on YouTube, on Facebook, on the app. There's many places you could donate if you really want to help us. Um, and uh, just make sure that wherever you donate, donate to us directly. Don't donate. Don't give somebody money and think that they're coming to us. Like some people donate to other organizations that somehow tell them they're going to give to us. Don't do any of that. You want to donate? Donate to us directly. Uh, we don't have any anybody collecting donations for us. So, Bezat uh, Hashem, Kadosh Baruch will help everybody, protect everybody, and also make everyone realize En Od Milvado. There's nothing else but Him. Bahabat Zacham, Bezat Hashem, we'll see each other again tomorrow. Kol Tuv. זה ידידי הרב ירון ראובן שמסר את נפשו ומוסר את נפשו ולכן ידידיי ואהוביי אני רוצה לעשות לו כאן הפתעה הערב אני צריך מכם עשרה או בחורים או אברכים שיקבלו עליהם ללמוד את השס בשנה שבע דפים ליום שלוש וחצי שעות ביום בעזרת השם יזכו במלגה מכובדת מארגון בעזרת השם שס בשנה מי שהראשון מוזמן הראשונים יבואו לשולחן הנשיאות בזריזות, בזריזות. ברוך השם, 17 לומדי תורה שקיבלו על עצמם את סיום השס. 17 סיומי שס בשנה לכבודה של תורה, לכבוד עם ישראל, לכבוד הקדוש ברוך הוא שישתבח בבנה ויאמר בני בכורי ישראל עמלי תורה שקיבלו על עצמם לבוא וללמוד שבע דפים ביום לבוא ולזכות את עם ישראל ברוכים תהיו